Welcome to Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, all ready to harvest. For over half a century, the Evangelistic Outreach team has traveled across the street, about the nation, and around the world with the gospel message. We're dedicated to the vision of our late founder, Dr. Calvin Evans, to reach the unreached for Jesus Christ. May the love of Christ touch you, and may His Word teach you today on Evangelistic Outreach. We cannot thank you enough for all that you do for us. Your prayers, your support mean the world to us. We're here today because you care enough to pray. And so we're going to ask that you join us as we ask God's blessings over this broadcast because God has something special just for you. So will you join me in prayer? Lord, I love you today. We thank you and humbly come to you and asking that you would just bless this program. Uh, the, the Word of God is already blessed, so I pray that you would anoint the ears, anoint the hearts that are listening and watching today. And Lord, if someone needs encouraged, I pray that you would do that through the song or through the Word of God. I pray, Lord, that you would convict those that need you in their life. Lord, we've been focused on the, the end of time and, and focused on reaching more lost than we've ever had before. And I pray that someone would be saved today as they watch and listen to this program. And Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for your, uh, for your hand of mercy and grace over us and your hedge of protection as we've traveled many miles this month. And we ask that you would continue to be with us and bless this program. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We hope this song is an encouragement to you today. Brethren, we have met to worship and adore the Lord our God. Will you pray with all your power while we try to preach the Well, we've had a very busy month, been traveling a lot of miles, been a lot of wonderful services, and this week will be no exception. We're traveling to Proctorville, Ohio with our dear friend Kermit Taylor at the Christ Community Church. Kermit is on the board of directors of this ministry, has been for many years, and we cannot thank him enough for the great honor to preach in his wonderful pulpit. I ask that you would join us this week, and let's fill the church 
Uh, they always have wonderful singing. I, they have a lot of church choirs that come in and sing as well. Service time is 7 p.m. It's right across from the Lawrence County Fairgrounds in Proctorville, Ohio. And we encourage you to join us there on Monday and Tuesday night beginning at 7 p.m. of this week. And then also encourage you, uh, this will be the last time we'll be mentioning this month's free gift offer on the Prophecy Update. And uh, we, we've received a lot of great response, people asking a lot of questions. In fact, I was talking to a young man just yesterday before coming into the office, uh, and he said uh, a young man brought a Bible to their football practice, and after practice they were talking about the end of time. And he said, that's all we've been talking about the last few days. And I was encouraged to hear about that. And also the young people that are inquisitive and asking questions. It's a great time to be a Christian. And it's a great time to be serving the Lord because Jesus Christ is coming back. And if you have maybe questions yourself about the recent hurricanes or how North Korea plays into the end time prophecy, this message is just for you. So would you, would you contact us this week? And we'll send it out to you free of charge. You don't have to pay shipping or handling. Uh, nothing for the DVDs or CDs. Absolutely free. All you need to do is contact us. Our toll-free number is 800-767-8713. You can also visit our website and order it there at calvinevans.org. Or you can always write to us and request it at 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio. 45662. I encourage you to visit the website as well. There you'll find our YouTube channel. Uh, with uh, We've archived every television program that you see. Uh, you can also receive uh, our free gift offers as well as uh, hundreds of messages that you can download free of charge. Uh, we have a lot of information there. You can also donate securely to this ministry on the website. So again, calvinevans.org. Make sure you look us up there today. Well, let's go into the message, and we trust it will challenge you and encourage you. God bless you. So what the North Koreans were doing there, they were testing a nuclear reactor in Syria so that they could be supplied with materials for Syria and for them. But Israel said, I don't need a vote from the UN. I don't need a vote from America. I don't need to hear from Great Britain. I have heard from Jehovah God. This is our land and we will not surrender it. And the only way to stop it is to destroy it before it ever starts. So they bombed the reactor. The world denied it. The nations of the world denied it. They denied it for four years. And finally they came out. They were building a plutonium reactor. They hit the right spot. They stopped it in 2007. Fast forward. The news last night reported that North Korea is now supplying nuclear materials to possibly be put on scuds. And they discovered them in Syria last night. So while the whole world's watching North Korea, Israel's watching the North. Why are they watching the North? Because the prophet Jeremiah told them in the word of God in Jeremiah chapter 13, he told his people, lift up your eyes and behold them that cometh from the North. Jeremiah prophesied that. And he went on to say, it'll be during the time as a woman that is in travail. The same words that Jesus used, the same word that Paul used, the, the same word that he wrote to the Thessalonian church about, the same word that was used then. Jeremiah talked about the same thing. When you see this world starting to groan with labor pains and creation groan with labor pains, you better look to the north. Hmm. Now, let's get this right. Jews pray for three things. The return of a Messiah. The rebuilding of the temple. And the resurrection of the dead. That's what they're praying for at the Wailing Wall when they go there. 
Ask any Orthodox Jew. They'll tell you that's what they're praying for, those three things. You say, well, preacher, why didn't they accept Jesus as the Messiah? Why didn't he say that's the Messiah? Well, it's simple. I'll give you the exact reason why he didn't, because he claimed to be God. They believe that when the Messiah comes, he will be the agent of God. He won't be God himself. So they thought it was heresy when Jesus said, I and my Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen Yahweh, you've seen Jehovah. We're one. So they thought that's heresy and they wouldn't accept that. And that's exactly what will be their downfall in the end. There will be a false prophet that will arise that will say, I've got the answer to two of the three, not the resurrection of the dead, but I have come. I have come as a forerunner for the Messiah. And for the Messiah to come and sit on the throne, then we have to rebuild the temple. So they say, hey, two out of three is not bad. And they follow him, a strong delusion. They follow him. But in the middle of the week, he reveals his true nature. He has an evil spirit. He is controlled by the Antichrist and Satan. And the end result is they suffer greatly and the persecution comes. Well now preacher, all of that's great, but where are we at with all of this? Isaiah 17:1. 700 years before Jesus came to this world. Isaiah 17, 1 says, the burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city. Is it still a city today? Does Damascus exist today? Does Damascus exist today? So it's still a city, so that means this couldn't have been fulfilled. It's still a city. But then the Bible says, and it shall be a ruinous heap. Do you know what the drills are for? Israel knows that North Korea is going to help Hezbollah. And they know Hezbollah is coming from the north. But you get this down and you mark it down. Israel needs nobody's permission, not yours, not mine, not Washington. They don't need anybody else's consultation. They could care in the least what the rest of the world thinks. They know they are God's chosen and God's hand is on them. And they are saying before that ever happens, we will absolutely destroy Damascus to the north. We'll annihilate Damascus because we're not going to let them destroy our land and destroy our people. I, I know I've heard all of it. I've heard everything. Well, we've got Thad. We don't even know that it works. And second of all, Thad is not in South Korea. We couldn't put it there. They would have thought that we were trying to do a preemptive strike against North Korea. We don't have any way to guard them. You say, well, preacher, I know. I've watched them. They took those missiles out before when they came. They know how to handle that, but not with warheads on them. It's one thing to take them out but to take them out uh, when they are loaded with chemical war, warheads or loaded with atomic capabilities is another story. <laughs> Boy, I have so much I'd love to tell you. I gotta quit, I know. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. I am so glad. I am so glad I am saved. I am so glad I am ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And before all these things happen, I believe there will be a trumpet that will sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. I believe fully in the rapture of the church. That's why I've repented of my sins and believe the Lord Jesus Christ as my savior and obey the gospel and live the life for Jesus Christ because he and he alone is king of kings and Lord of lords and there's no other way to make it, but by him. Now, Mitch, uh, all your ushers, all your alternate ushers, every usher, everybody thinks they're an usher. Get up front. Come up front. Come up front, if you will.
Well, there come, I need every one of you, every one of you, because we're going to get this done quick. I'm going to tell you what it is before they give it to you, and this is yours to take with you. Don't pass them out yet, fellas. Just pass them among yourselves. There's plenty of them there, one for everybody. Don't pass them out yet. Stay right there. I don't want them in their hands until I tell you. I, I sought God about this message. And while they're getting ready, every one of you, I want you to look right here. I'm afraid I failed you as a pastor. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Week after week, week after week, I watch people get colder and colder to church and to the gospel. And week after week, I look back no new sinners. No new faces of unsaved people. I'm not blaming you. Apparently I have failed you. I look back at some of you that are sinners and you are comfortable being a sinner. I'm glad you're at church. I'm glad you enjoy Christian company. But I don't know how to emphasize to you I think God wants a church in the end times that knows two or three things. First, you know that you have to repent of your sins. I want every sin under the blood. And you have to love the Lord more than this world. You do. Now I wish I could say, and don't take this the wrong way, I wish I could say I could look across week after week the church and see a church that loves the Lord and loves church more than they love the world. But that's not what I'm seeing as your pastor. And before God and in the throne room of heaven, I took total blame for it. Now be honest with me. How many of you believe it is a pastor's job to warn people that Jesus is coming again? Every one of you believe that? How many of you believe it is a pastor's job to tell people the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and that they must obey the gospel? How many of you believe that? I don't have the power to save anyone. I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying. But I am to be a motivator to you to get you to see your loved ones are going to go through some terrible days if the church is raptured out. And if you don't care about them, I had to ask God, is it my fault that I'm not conveying the gospel to them clearly? Am I presenting it clearly to you? I need some relief. I am dying from the burden of uncommitted Christians and uncaring sinners. And I need some relief. So today, I sought the Lord this week as I have never sought God before. I've never seen this done. This will be the most unusual invitation you'll ever experience in this church. In one moment, these gentlemen are going to give you something to take home. It is a card. It is a spiritual release card. And on it, it simply says this. There is a place for you to sign it. There is a place for you to date it. And it is yours to keep. Do not give it to anybody else. This is your card. But it says this. Now let me clarify this. Have I told you the gospel today? Amen. Do you know what you need to do to go to heaven? Amen. Do you know you need to be closer to God now in light of the coming than ever before? Simply says this, spiritual release. I hereby acknowledge on this date that I was presented the gospel of Jesus Christ and made fully aware of my responsibility to repent of my sins and to be prepared 
for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ushers, if you will, pass them out to everybody. Don't talk, don't move around, pass them out. Up in the balcony, everybody gets one. They'll come, they'll get ready with an invitation song while they pass these out. Everybody gets one, this is yours. Now you've got, a, you've got some decisions to make. I think before that I sign it, I thought during the invitation today, one more time, I thought I'd find me a place to bow over there and pray and say, Lord, I want to be clean and I want to be close. And I'm going to do that before I sign it. Now, some of you can't sign this because you're not saved. I'm praying to God for two things this morning. Number one, that God would just help us care about sinners and care about our soul and care about our spiritual standing and care about the fact that we have loved ones that's not going to heaven with us. And I pray that Christians will swallow your pride and drop your arrogance and don't look to somebody else but flood these altars and these alleys, call out to God and sign this card and put it somewhere where you can see it regularly. Will you open a particular drawer or you look a place just where you see every day and remind yourself today I need to be the best that I can be for Jesus Christ. And if you're lost, you're not signing this to be saved. But if you're lost, this is what God spoke to my heart. When we're out of here and you go and you look and you see it, you'll say, I'll never be able to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ as the judge of this world and say to him, nobody told me about you, Jesus, and nobody invited me to you, Jesus, and nobody said that they cared for me, Jesus, because today, this is our token to you. We're presenting the gospel, the greatest gift you ever have, and you'll be able to look and say, on this date, I had the opportunity to say yes to you, Jesus. I had the opportunity to say, yes, Lord, I'll follow you. I'm not interested in you doing enough to get by. I'm interested in people not only repenting of their sins, but getting close to God and saying, Lord, I want the fire of the Holy Ghost inside of me. I want to burn for lost people. I want to see revival come. God still has given us warnings to give us time. They stand together. They'll get a song. We'll sing. If you're in the balcony, they'll get you too. Everybody got one. What are you going to do with yours? Some's already coming. What are you going to do with yours? What are you going to do? Oh, it's just a card. It may be just a card, but it's about the gospel. And it doesn't matter what you think of me. In the end, it's what you think of Jesus. He gave me the flowers. His rain makes them grow. Oh, the Lord has been good to me. He gave me the mountains and the
his blood I think of my sin Just to be my friend Oh, the Lord has been good to me The things that He gave me I see all around The air that I breathe As I stand Veterans, just keep standing and wave those flags for us one time, would you? God bless each and God every one of you. God bless America. Well, we appreciate you tuning into the program. My, what a blessing to be with you. And I hear from folks constantly that week after week they tell us that the programs are a help to them. That's what we pray. And then also, you'll never know what it means to go into a church and see folks that tune into the broadcast regularly and then they join us in special services. Don't forget, on Monday and Tuesday night, Brian and I will be privileged to be with Kermit Taylor and the good folks at Christ Community Church in Proctorville, Ohio, right beside of the Lawrence County Fairgrounds. It's easy to find, 7 o'clock on those evenings. I hope you'll help us fill up their sanctuary there. You'll never know what an encouragement that is to a pastor, what an encouragement it is to us, and I encourage you to bring your lost loved ones out Encourage them to come and hear the gospel message. Then pray, pray, pray that the Spirit of the Lord will touch their heart and that they'll turn to Christ and be saved. Thank you for joining us today. May God bless you. Thank you for joining us today on Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are For more information about this ministry, contact us at Evangelistic Outreach Ministries, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, 45662, or toll free at 800-767-8713. You can also visit us online at calvinevans.org.